We are kicking off today with The Rock, who last wrestled at WrestleMania 40, where he and Roman Reigns defeated Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins in Night One's main event. On the post-WrestleMania Raw, Rock vowed to return and get a match with Rhodes, and his comeback may be happening very soon. After appearing on the Pat McAfee show, Cody Rhodes was saying goodbye to those in the studio when McAfee said, I heard the big guy's coming back this week. When a taken back Rhodes asked, is he? McAfee replied saying, you tell me, and Rhodes was coy and asked, which one of the big guys is returning? This was a cryptic conversation between two people probably in the know, hence why they were able to get their points across without really saying anything. McAfee walked off by saying, you told me all I need to know, as Cody may not have revealed anything, but he certainly didn't deny Pat's suspicions. On social media, fans proclaim that this is a sign of The Rock's impending return at Bad Blood, where Rhodes and Roman Reigns will take on the bloodline. Returning this weekend would be a big way for The Rock to reinsert himself into the situation, and we'll have to see what WWE has planned. During his appearance on Pat's show, Rhodes also spoke about WrestleMania 41 and teased something huge for next April inside Las Vegas' Allegiant Stadium. He said, WrestleMania 41, I'm looking to do what I've done three times now and enter the main event, but I think it'll be something that perhaps is bigger than anyone anticipated. Considering his previous victories and losses against Roman Reigns and The Rock, Rhodes' plans for the showcase of the Immortals could be one for the ages. There is a battle for attention right now in wrestling, which could create some huge moments, and that could mean The Rock returning sooner than anyone anticipated. Do you want to see The Rock come back and interfere in Cody's match at Bad Blood? Share your thoughts down in the comments. As for Roman Reigns, he will align with Rhodes against the Bloodline this weekend in Bad Blood, but it may not be the last time Reigns faces the group at a PLE. Since his SummerSlam return, fans have been predicting a Bloodline vs. Bloodline War Games match at Survivor Series, but this match may be different from what fans expect. During a Q&A, WrestleVotes shared that the lineup of talent on Reigns' team may not be what fans had predicted, especially as Jey Uso is doing his own thing as Intercontinental Champion. WrestleVotes did say that Reigns' team could indeed consist of the Usos and Sami Zayn as predicted, but there's a real possibility it could be three other superstars. We'll have to see what superstars align with Reigns this November in Canada, but nothing is for certain right now in the OTC's war with Solo Sokoa's bloodline. Before this week's AEW Dynamite, Sammy Guevara and Serpentico had a match which saw Guevara attempt to cut her off the ropes in a relatively standard move. Unfortunately, the Spanish god did not get up after the spot, and AEW personnel rushed to the ring to attend to him before he was led off on a stretcher. This is not good news for Sammy Guevara as he is currently one half of the ROH Tag Team Champions alongside Dustin Rhodes, and PW Torch later reported it appeared to be a head or neck injury. Sources at the scene said that the timing of the cutter was a little off, with Serpentico landing with Guevara's face under him, reportedly knocking out the ROH Tag Champion. This is a concerning incident and we're hoping for a speedy recovery for Guevara, whose situation shows that injuries and setbacks can happen at any time in the ring. Unfortunately, Guevara wasn't the only injured talent before this week's Dynamite begun, as indie wrestler Kelly Madan was injured in her match with Lady Frost. Madan took a spinning move off the ropes which resulted in Frost's legs landing on her head and neck area, and a quick pinfall was made with Madan being motionless. One fan in attendance described Madan as obviously out, and AEW's medical team, Frost, and the referee surrounded Madan as the lights were darkened. Madan was taken out on a backboard after the ring ropes were loosened, and we hope to have more on her situation and Guevara soon. Backstage, Renee Paquette was with MVP, but she was interrupted by Prince Nana, who noted that MVP had spoken real spicy about himself and Swerve Strickland last week. Nana reminded MVP that he was once a wrestler and won't hesitate to lace them up again, but MVP said it's not his role to handle complaints, but he has someone who does. MVP pointed off screen and Shelton Benjamin appeared in a dapper suit, with MVP introducing him as his business partner and the president of our complaints department. This marks Benjamin's AEW debut after being released from WWE in September of 2023, though he's since competed in numerous independent promotions. Benjamin was part of the Hurt Business with MVP, with the expectation that Bobby Lashley will be joining AEW soon enough, expect big things for the Hurt Syndicate very soon. MVP clearly wants to run a faction of some of the very best wrestlers AEW has to offer, including potentially Swerve Strickland, but could MVP also have his sights set on Mercedes Monet? 
On Dynamite, Monet was interviewed by Paquette, but MVP showed up and agreed with her claims that she had changed AEW for the better since her Big Business debut. He added, I absolutely love Big Business, so please take my card and perhaps we should talk. Working with the TBS champion would be a huge feather in the cap of MVP, and do you think she would be a perfect fit for the Hurt Syndicate? Give your thoughts down below. On this week's Raw, World Heavyweight Champion Gunter had a brief conversation with Braun Breaker, exciting fans about a possible showdown between the two. While that match could happen, it won't be anytime soon, as WrestleVotes reports that a match between them isn't planned for WWE Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia next month. It was pointed out that a rise to the world title scene would be a little too quick for Braun, who only just lost the Intercontinental title and only started showing signs of a face turn this week. With the high expectations in WWE for Braun Breaker, it seems inevitable he'll be in the world title picture in the future, but that push won't see him travel to Riyadh next month. Now, L.A. Knight has been on a roll since capturing the U.S. title at SummerSlam from Logan Paul, as he's already retained against the likes of Santos Escobar, Andrade, and Ludwig Kaiser. With that said, fans have been eagerly awaiting a major feud to elevate his reign to the next level, and that could see the megastar share the ring with Randy Orton. WrestleVotes reports that WWE is interested in an Orton Knight program, and fans are excited at the prospect of a long-heated rivalry between the two that will raise the profile of the U.S. title. Both stars possess a unique blend of charisma and in-ring prowess that would make for a captivating angle, and if WWE goes ahead, this could be one of WWE's top recent rivalries. Knight would gain plenty by working with Orton, while the prospect of another US title run for Randy is intriguing, and fans can expect an exciting feud soon enough on SmackDown. Over to NXT as the CW debut of the show drew a whopping 895,000 viewers, an increase of 44.4%, or 275,000 viewers, compared to the 620,000 who tuned in last week on USA. WWE has issued a statement celebrating the success of the show, with Shawn Michaels, the driving force behind NXT, sharing his excitement on social media. The CW debut was clearly a hit, but days before the show, fans noticed a potential change as the CW's listing had NXT rated TV 14, with some speculating a more mature product. Once the show aired, though, it was confirmed that NXT remains TV PG despite the listing, and to make that point clear, the crowd were censored during the broadcast. The fans in Chicago's All-State Arena erupted in holy sh** chants during the show, but these were bleeped out by the broadcaster during the show. According to Mike Johnson of PW Insider, the decision to censor the chance was made by the CW, possibly due to the network's status as a broadcast channel. It's believed that broadcast channels have stricter regulations, such as what we saw with SmackDown on Fox, another broadcast network. During that time, the crowd chants were often silenced and wrestler curse words beeped out, leading to frustration in WWE, and especially this summer when these bleeps were more frequent. Ultimately, these broadcasters have the final say about what makes it to their network, even if fans feel these acts of censorship are disruptive to a show's presentation. Are you disappointed that the CW Network censored fan chants during this week's NXT? Please share your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. More from Dynamite as minutes before the show, AEW announced that Taz would not be able to attend the event after being attacked in the parking lot and injuring his leg. Instead of Taz, Nigel McGuinness called the action on this week's show, and at this time, there's no word on who ambushed the human suplex machine. During a backstage interview, an emotional hook declared that he'd find out who'd attacked his father, and he was coming for them as the former FTW champion held back tears. As for Taz, he took to Twitter to say that he was at the hospital and would be heading back to New York, saying he needed to see his own doctor as soon as possible. Taz added that these guys got me good, implying that there were more than one assailant, and followed up by saying, there is going to be hell to pay, and not by me. It'll be interesting to see who is revealed as Taz's attacker, and who do you think was behind the assault? Give your accusations below in the comments. The much-anticipated international title match of Will Ospreay and Ricochet ended in a no contest on Dynamite's 5th anniversary, following interference from Kanosuke Takeshita. The match had originally ended in a double pin draw when Osprey hit the hidden blade and got the pinfall, but his shoulders were also on the mat. Tony Khan announced via Justin Roberts that the match would be restarted, securing a second win by both competitors before Osprey hit another hidden blade on Ricochet. That was when Takeshita ambushed the Brit, throwing the match out and severing the civility between Osprey and Don Callis' stable. Osprey's friend Kyle Fletcher and Callis were both shown to leave the show prior to the opening bout, and this could be the start of big things for Takeshita. 
Fightful Select reports that Takeshita is being eyed for a significant push in the near future, his biggest push to date, so it's likely that a budding feud with Will Ospreay will be part of that. Takeshita's push will lead to an important pay-per-view spot, and the question now is where will Ricochet fall in all of this? It's been several years since Ricochet and Osprey were able to test each other, so we got to see them use all of the tricks they had picked up in that time. Considering it's unlikely to be their last encounter, it's good they left room to grow, but it's hard to think of many ways they could outdo themselves, given what we've already seen. Chris Jericho was on Dynamite's 5th anniversary and spoke about AEW's new media deal before eliciting the boos of the fans in Pittsburgh by deliberately misnaming the town. Jericho then discussed ROH World Champion Mark Briscoe and challenged him to a title match at Wrestle Dream, and Briscoe came out with his conglomeration allies. Jericho asserted that Briscoe couldn't beat him, but crossed the line by saying that Mark would never be as good as his late brother Jay. This tasteless remark earned Jericho a strike that sent him reeling, and Briscoe accepted his challenge to an ROH World title match at Wrestle Dream. Jericho held the title for a handful of months in 2022 before his reign was ended by Claudio Castagnoli, and will we see him regain the gold at Wrestle Dream? Time will tell. On last week's Dynamite, Hangman Page faced Jeff Jarrett in a lumberjack match, but the cowboy attacked those around the ring, including Juice Robinson, who fought back. After the match, Page attacked Juice and tried to hang him on the middle rope, claiming he was meddling with his business, setting up a match for this week's show. Before that encounter, the Guns were being interviewed backstage about the match between Juice and Page, only to be blindsided by Page, who had a steel chair. Page was able to neutralize any potential numbers advantage Robinson had, but the former AEW champion didn't count on Robinson having another ally. The match got started before the bell rang as Robinson and Page brawled all over the arena, and once they got in the ring, they had a brutal match that was won by the Cowboy. After the match, Page continued his assault and tried to use his belt to hang Juice over the ropes, but then the music of Jay White filled the arena. The Switchblade made his big return on Dynamite's 5th anniversary by spearing Page through a table on the outside of the ring in a shocking return, especially given recent reports. It was recently said by Robinson that White was taking his time before his comeback, but we're sure Juice was pleased to see him after his match with Adam Page. Now White is finally back and is poised for a feud with the Cowboy, exciting fans who are ready to see the Switchblade compete in an AEW ring again. On this week's NXT, Roxanne Perez retained her NXT women's title against Julia and after the match took to social media to gloat about her win in front of CM Punk. In a photo, Perez posed with the visibly annoyed Punk, a comedic nod to their backstage interaction as Punk has disapproved of Perez's attitude in recent months. While Perez shared the photo, it was Punk's comment that has had fans talking as on Instagram he said that, I'm hurt, old, tired, and I work with children. This line is a direct reference to his infamous All Out 2022 rant where he shared a similar sentiment that would set off a chain of events resulting in his fight with the Elite. This situation would forever reshape Punk's relationship with AEW, and after getting into another fight with Jack Perry last year, he was ultimately fired by Tony Khan. Punk clearly hasn't lost his sense of humor about what transpired in AEW, even though he's now back in WWE, and he isn't the only person to reference his All Elite controversy. After losing the NXT title to Trick Williams in a match officiated by Punk, Ethan Page said on Twitter that he's known for ruining locker rooms, and now he's ruined his life. Page didn't directly name Punk in his tweet, but it's clear who he was referring to, as what happened with Punk in AEW continues to be a hot-button topic today. While his past in AEW is marred by controversy, Punk's return to WWE NXT shows that he's still a major force in the wrestling world, even if he's not shy about poking fun at himself. On Dynamite, Private Party squashed the Iron Savages in one of the quickest matches of the past five years, and followed up by challenging the Young Bucks to a tag title match. Jack Perry helped his friends attack Private Party until Katsuyori Shibata made the save, helping the faces to fend off the ambush by the Elite. The main event of Dynamite saw a rare title for title match as AEW World Champion Brian Danielson and Continental Champion Kazuchika Okada defended their respective gold. With that said, Okada's title was only on the line for the first 20 minutes, and the match began with only about 5 minutes left in the normal runtime of the show. The anniversary show was given, as Nick Jackson put it, a substantial overrun, but it only took a few minutes before Brian and Okada were exchanging in a flurry of holds, takedowns, and counters. Okada took control and maintained it after we returned from the break, but the American Dragon managed to get back in as time ticked away on the Continental title stipulation. Okada rolled out of the ring to avoid a pin after a boo psycho knee, but in the end, Brian got the pin with a backslide on Okada, who was distracted by Claudio Castagnoli in the crowd. 
This was a fantastic choice to put in the main event spot, as the pair delivered as expected, and after the match, the Blackpool Combat Club attacked their former member. John Moxley said that none of this was about Danielson before Wheeler Yuta chased the group off with a hammer, with the exception of Moxley, who almost dared Yuta to use it. Yuta grabbed a mic and said he and Danielson would face Pac and Claudio next week, as he made clear that his allegiances rest with his friend, Brian Danielson. After losing his AEW World title shot to John Moxley, Darby Allin was on Dynamite this week and threw down the gauntlet, daring anyone brave enough to face him at WrestleDream. Allen headlined last year's Wrestle Dream where he faced Christian Cage, and who do you expect to see answer the challenge next week in Tacoma, Washington? Backstage, Katsuyori Shibata challenged Jack Perry to a TNT title match for Wrestle Dream, and while Perry said he'd think about it, he would then ambush the Japanese star from behind. Perry accepted the challenge, and do you think Shibata will be the one to end Perry's reign as TNT champion? Give your thoughts in the comments. Dynamite's third match of the night saw Britt Baker have her hometown crowd vehemently behind her as she took on Serena Deeb. Deeb, as the professor, used her smarts to dominate the early portion of the match and keep the pace to her liking, and as Baker also prefers a technical style, these two worked well together. Baker did a good job countering some of Deeb's signature offense, while the professor made DMD look good by giving her a lot of energy, and you could see both were trying hard. Baker was able to pick up a win with her signature lockjaw submission, and although Deeb attacked Baker's knee after the match, Queen Aminata made the save. Now 2024 has been a huge year for AEW, and it's no secret that this has been a media rights deal year for the company, and now, at long last, a deal has been confirmed. AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery have officially locked in a new three-year media rights deal with their deal being confirmed by Variety and marking a huge win for Tony Khan. While exact financial details weren't disclosed, sources indicate the deal is valued at over $150 million a year, which will encompass Dynamite and Collision, which will stay on TBS and TNT. An exciting change is that starting in January 2025, AEW shows will stream live on Max for US subscribers, with shows available on demand. This is a significant first for AEW since its 2019 launch, adding an entirely new dimension to their content distribution and comes after years of speculation of an on-demand service. Max will also address the pay-per-view offerings of AEW, and there will be a space for AEW's extensive archive of events that have taken place since 2019. Interestingly, Rampage is not included in this new deal, which could hint at potential shifts or new directions for AEW's content in the future. While Rampage was reportedly a show WBD requested in 2021, the new agreement shows that both sides are choosing to focus on Dynamite and Collision going forward. WBD mentioned that Rampage could potentially find a new home, but no plans have been announced regarding the future of that brand, but AEW will still have a third show. AEW is reportedly preparing to debut a new show on Fox titled Shockwave, another sign of the company's momentum and its ability to expand its reach. It's not clear right now where Shockwave will be stored, but Fightful Select report that AEW's current three shows, Dynamite, Collision, and Rampage, are expected to land on Max. If Rampage moves to another platform, though, then the library going forward will not be available on WBD, but whether that happens or not remains to be seen. Will you dive into AEW's library if it's all available on Max? Please share your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. On the September 20th SmackDown, Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns met on the Georgia Tech field in Atlanta for a tense cinematic segment that looked at the history of both men. The overall gist of this segment was that while the two of them will team at Bad Blood, they are by no means friends, and this segment has received praise for its presentation. On the Pat McAfee show, Cody Rhodes explained that he and Reigns didn't speak before the segment, and there was no script in place for what they would say to one another. This is another sign of how different WWE has become without Vince McMahon, who would have wrestlers learn promos word for word, often leading to stilted performances. Reigns and Rhodes will team this weekend at Bad Blood, though the question now is whether the pair can coexist when they face Jacob Fatu and Solo Sokoa in Atlanta, Georgia. It's been decades since The Undertaker led his Ministry of Darkness in WWE, but at a recent soccer game for Arsenal FC, the faction's theme was played during halftime. Those at the stadium didn't see the likes of The Undertaker, Midian, or The Acolytes, but this was a very cool, albeit random, wrestling theme cameo at this week's game. 